Well, the numbers are all tallied, the votes are in, and 2015 became the warmest year on record. Not by a little, but by a lot. Well, let's take a look at the numbers. 2015 beats the previous record year, 2014, by a cool 0.16 degrees centigrade. 10 of the 12 months in 2015 set new record highs. That means that 15 of the 16 warmest years on record all have occurred in the 21st century. The last El Nino of this size, which was 1998, was 0.26 degrees centigrade cooler than now. This puts 1998 into sixth place in the league table of warmest years. From the map you can see that it is truly global warming. Count the number of deep red pixels and compare them to the number of deep blue pixels. There are only three deep blue pixels, which are the record cold areas, and there are well over a hundred of the dark red pixels, which are record highs. If you look at the areas individually, every single category beats all previous records. Globally, the land increased by 1.3 degrees centigrade, or 2.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the highest ever. The ocean by 0.7 degrees centigrade, 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit, again the record. If you go to the northern hemisphere, the land and the ocean both set record highs, and in the same in the southern hemisphere. Here I've plotted the annual global temperature anomaly. And first thing to look at is the size of the jump. It's huge. I've also done a fit to the last 50 years worth of data and the rate of increase in global temperatures is a steady 0.16 degrees centigrade per decade. Very little sign of any pause or hiatus that people like to talk about. Now let's compare the rates for just the years of major El Nino events. That's 2015, 1998 and 1982. It shows a consistent trend with the overall average increase in temperature. We can show that by just sliding this curve upwards. Like that. The rate, if you compare just these El Nino years, is 0 0.15 degrees centigrade per decade. So the rate of warming is continuing despite the ups and downs of the El Nino and La Niñas. The real question is what is going to happen in 2016 and beyond. I'm fairly certain over the next few years the denialists will start using 2015 as the starting point of their analyses to prove that global warming has turned to global cooling or is in another hiatus. However, what's going to happen in the next few months? Well, first of all, we've got to look at El Nino. That peaked at the end of November and the beginning of December. So it's fairly likely that it's going to start moderating over the first part of 2016. However, there are indications that the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is going into a warming phase, which may overcome the effects of the El Nino-La Nina cycle. So we could continue to set records through 2016. My actual prediction is that probably 2016 will be a very warm year, but not necessarily as warm as 2015. So it'll probably be in the top five. This all comes as a major blow to those that believe that the sun is responsible for global warming. This solar maximum peaked at the beginning of 2014 and has been on a steep decline ever since. Yet global temperatures have increased all the way through 2014 and 2015 and are starting off in 2016 the same way. So despite declining solar activity, global temperatures have increased. Well, let's see how 2016 has already started. In 2015, we had approximately three highs for every one low. For there to be no global warming, these two numbers would have to be the same. And the fact that we have more highs than lows indicate the globe has warmed. But how is 2016 starting off? Very much the same way. So far this year, we've had 1,953 record highs globally compared with only 545 record lows. That says the warming is continuing through the first three weeks of January. So if you hear one of these snake oil salesmen trying to talk about hiatuses or global cooling over the last few years, please post a link to this video and tell them that they are talking complete and utter nonsense. So until next time, goodbye.